This is a tractor that's a 1941. Uh, I'm 78 years old, that's 79 years old, so that's a year older than I am. <laughs> and it still works, I still work, most days anyway. <laughs> I was a little bit uh, overwhelmed, at, you know, that my father-in-law thought enough of me to leave me the tractor. The tractor, from what I understand, belonged to my uncle Jack, John, I, it's his real name, Kumpel. He uh, had bought the tractor and my dad bought it from him. And from there, we used it on the farm for different things. It cultivated the corn. And when my father passed away, really nothing on the farm was uh divided up or anything. We kind of left it as is. It kind of felt right. And my mother still lived there. She lived there till she was 98. At that time, we opened the will. In the will, there was a list that my daughter Vicki and I had made up for them. And their job was to fill in who was to get what of their possessions. Well, once Dave found out that the tractor was his, we went to the farm, and we had known that this barn, which was probably built in the 18, early 1900s, the day my dad died, that barn fell down. Just an odd occurrence, but anyway, we went to the farm, and the barn had fallen on the tractor, and we weren't sure we could get it out. And Dave, when he looked at it, he wasn't sure he even wanted to take on this project because it was nothing like we thought it should look because we hadn't really paid attention to it for years. We were too busy caring for my mother and my dad and other people. But they worked several days to dig this tractor out and get the debris off of it and everything. And when he did, he was really discouraged. I remember him saying, I don't know if I want this tractor, <laughs> but... Uh, it was basically a basket case, really, because the barn had fallen in on it and everything, but it was very emotional. It had set in the barn, it was a dirt, or actually a wagon shed, I guess you would call it. It was a dirt floor, and the groundhogs had got in there and burrowed holes around it and everything so that the rear tire on the right side of it setting in the seat that tire was buried in the dirt well when we jacked it up to get try to get it out of there the rim had completely been eaten away because they have calcium in them so it wouldn't freeze but they used that in the tires for ballast to give the tractor some more traction and put more weight into the drive wheels. And uh, that's what uh, that's what ate it up, but actually, you know, because it was down in the ground. And uh, the one tire, like I said, one tire was totally shot. The wheel was gone, half of the wheel was gone. The other side had a, you know, wasn't usable. It was pretty well rusted up, but we were able to drag it out of the barn with it that way. And that's where it sat until I got uh, a set of tires from a friend, gave me a set of tires and rims off of a tractor that they had refurbished. And uh, they, they weren't much, <laughs> but they held air. The set of tires that are on it now, actually the, t the rims and everything are what's supposed to be on a Farmall M. They're bigger than the tires and rims that would have been on an H. An H had a tire, which you can no longer get. The tires that are on there now are 13.6, I believe they are, by 38. And uh, they're more what they would put on a formal M or a, a larger John Deere, which is actually what the rims came off of. They took them off a John Deere tractor, and uh, I repainted them because they were yellow, and that didn't go with the international red. And then I put it in the garage out here where I could start to work on it. It had been in that barn for probably 35 years. Not run, nothing was done with it at all. 
so it looked more like a rust bucket than a tra red tractor. When I got it in the garage and everything, you could turn it over with a bar, but it would not turn over on its own. It would it would crank and get, with a battery in it. It would crank and then it would seize up, and then you could crank it over with a bar, and then it would crank again to that point it would seize up. When I took it apart, I found that it had a, a had broken piston rings and carbon had built up on top of the piston, which when that came up and hit the head, it was like a, a dead stop. But you could push it through with a bar. Uh, I in the process, I had the head re completely rebuilt, uh, the valves ground and everything. Uh, the block or the head was cooked and degreased and all and uh, new valve springs were put on it or else they were shimmed which you know depending on what it needed I had that done out of house I did not have the equipment to do that uh, when I pulled the pan and pulled the pistons out of it uh, I was able to clean the pistons up clean the ring glues out grooves out put new rings in it own the cylinder walls, put all that back in, and then uh, buy a gasket set, put the head on, readjust all the valves. I, I knew that the crank, the hand crank didn't work because it wouldn't line up with a crank pulley. And I didn't know why or anything. And later on when I was working on the tractor, and I guess it's when I had it split probably, to put the clutch in it, I found that the frame was cracked. So I had to pull the frame back together with a come along and then grind it and weld it back in place. And now the crank works. Back, I would say years ago, before the gasoline was uh, as good as it is today, uh, you would start the engine on gasoline. It had a small, about a half a gallon tank setting up there. You would open that up and let that feed into the carburetor and then start the engine. And after it warmed up, after the engine run for a while, then you could quickly shut off the gas and turn on the kerosene and it would start running on kerosene. And the reason for that was pretty much that it got more power. The horsepower rating on this, I believe is 26 or 27 horsepower is all. My lawn and garden tractor has more horsepower <laughs> than than this tractor, but this has a lot more torque. And of course, with a heavy flywheel and everything, gives it more power with the to drive the rear axles or the wheels. It's a pretty simple engine, really. It's you know it has a it gets its power from a long stroke. The piston travels quite a distance up and down. That gives it the the torque that it needs to to do the work. It's actually, the engine is part of the frame in some extent because the frame, is, the side rails bolt to the engine block and, and to the front bolster and to the bell housing in the back transmission case. It's all, you know, it's all integral. It's all pretty much one big chunk of iron. The seat that I had on the tractor was the, I don't know if it was the, the original seat, but it was an original international seat. Uh, the cushioning was all gone off of it. The, the canvas cover was all deteriorated and gone. And there was a few holes rusted in the pan, the metal part of it, which I just painted up and everything. But uh, Janet didn't like that, so she bought me a new seat, which is pretty much what it would have had on it when it was new. And it is much more comfortable. <laughs> the first time I was in the house and I heard this tractor running, I couldn't believe it. I, I was out of this house in a shot out the door and Dave, it, it made us both so excited. He was all smiles. I was excited, and it just felt so good 
to see this tractor my parents had all those many years ago and from 1941 to see that tractor running it was amazing most of the parts for like the rebuilding the engine weren't, weren't a problem you could you could buy those parts some of the parts are a little hard to find for it. They, uh, they make some replacement parts, but not everything for it. Uh, it's pretty much everything on it is original to the tractor other than, than the uh, rims and tires on the rear. The nose piece, well, that was kind of, it was missing. There's a small plate that goes on the front of it. Uh, the plate costs probably Fifty dollars plus fifty some dollars plus tax. It would have cost probably sixty dollars or more to buy it. Uh, I was at a flea market in Pennsylvania, rough and tumble, and a man had the complete grill assembly assembly with that piece in it. And I asked about buying just that piece, where well, he wouldn't sell just that piece. And I believe he was asking seventy five originally for it. I got him down to sixty five. And then I didn't have that much money with me, really. <laughs> and I, I walked away, and I came back later, and I asked him if he would sell it for $50. And he says, no, but he says, I'll tell you what. He says, we'll flip for it. If you win the flip, you, you get it for 50 If I win it, you pay 65 for it. I says, that's fair. So we tossed a coin, and I won and got it for $50. So <laughs> uh, The nameplate on the side, is, it was a little emotional because it has a lot of meaning to it. Uh, it you know, it's from my father-in-law and my wife's uncle, John, or Jack, as we called him. And that's the name of the Jack Russell that came of it. My grandson, Garrett, made the plate in high school for me and I thought that was one of the neatest things to put on the tractor. <laughs>